I had arrived at this point of competence in my career, but you feel completely incompetent at the game of life. My wife asked me, why, why are you not excited about the things that you're working on, some of the biggest deals in my career? I just said, you know, it just doesn't seem that important anymore. I finally got to this point in my life where I looked out my office and said, there has to be more to life than this. Finally, a friend said, you need to go to this Halftime Institute. They help people just like you figure out what God's calling you to do next. And so I did not walk here, I ran here because I needed help. When I went through this journey, there wasn't a Halftime Institute. And I made a lot of mistakes. In fact, when I was first introduced to Bob Buford, he said to me, well, maybe you had this kind of difficult experience so that you could invest the rest of your life helping other people avoid some of the same mistakes. To get people into this mode, we provide three really essential tools around teaching, coaching, and connecting. When people come, we have the opportunity to teach them. We help them identify their strengths, identify their gifts, identify their talents and abilities. We're not just trying to get people busy. We're trying to get people infused with the Holy Spirit and then launched into their calling. Our ability to use our own experiences to come from a place of authenticity that has led now to a clearer identity of our path in the second half gives us that kind of guiding process in our teaching. Teaching would have helped me, number one, avoid common mistakes. Number two, get, have a sense of confidence to take my time and slowly discover my calling rather than rushing into something. Coaching is, in my opinion, the most critical piece when it comes to the journey of halftime. It helps people sort of do more like a hundred small, courageous decisions over an extended period of time. Our team of coaches have not only the calling to coach, but the training to know that they need to be a student of good questions and active listening. For the first time, a coach was saying, I want to dig deep into you, Rhonda. This is about me discovering what makes me joyful. We help people build margin around their time and their talent and their treasure so they can get connected into the area that they want to serve in. What I'm most excited about is the multiplication factor of our uh, connecting efforts. If you name the issue, we know people around the world that we can introduce you to. And that's an invaluable resource for somebody that's kind of moving out of life one into life two. Finding my sweet spot changed everything. It changed me, of course, but it's my marriage that is blossoming and flourishing, and it's my wife who's flourishing now in her ministry, and it's leaving a legacy for the kids. If everybody was working in their sweet spot, it would be heaven. That is the purpose, I think, that we're ultimately working toward, and, and God's perfecting us in that way. So each time we see someone live out their calling, it's like looking into what it will be like in heaven. It's just interesting to be um, in your sweet spot for uh, going on nine years. You know that God would bless me with um, a role in an organization that I have just incredible passion for. I'm with people sorting through what God means to them. And I just look at the, the impact that they're making in the kingdom. And I just say, I, I had a tiny little role in working with God to help that person get to that point. I mean, that's just a cool thing.